Here's 150 years right here, and there's still 50 in that bag over there. We've got our basket to put the corn in, and we've got the bucket to put the, um, what's it called, peels? Husks in, thank you. And that is gonna just go right to compost. So we are gonna sit on the swing in the shade. We've got the fan blowing on us and we are gonna get started. Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be preserving 200 years of corn, four bushels, four burlap bags full of corn. So here in New Jersey, sweet corn is a big thing. We grow a variety called Silver Queen. It is absolutely delicious. It is so, so sweet and just, mmm. Well, you know, you can only get corn from July until very beginning of September. I like to make that delicious Jersey corn last longer. So what I do is I preserve it. I did try last year to can it in my pressure canner and it was a no-go. Silver Queen corn is so sweet that it just releases so much sugar that it actually burns. It was horrible. Yuck. The only people that liked it, or not even people, were the chickens. So I'm so glad I only did a small test batch last year and didn't waste a whole lot of my good corn. We prefer to freeze it. So that is what we are doing today. We have 200 ears of corn all shucked. And the first thing we need to do is blanch the corn. So I have two big pots on the stove. I have my big canning pot and just like a regular, I don't know, six quart pot. I can probably do about 18 to 20 ears at a time. I have boiling water and I'm just going to blanch the corn for three minutes. Then I'm going to put it in a sink full of ice water to stop the cooking process and then lay it out to cool so it is easier to handle. So I will show you all of that. And we are going to cut it off the cob, most of it, and freeze it like that, just to have, like if you buy a bag of frozen corn from the grocery store. Some of it we are going to freeze whole, as like whole corn on the cob. We did it last year and it was really, really good. So we're gonna do some of that. That just takes up a little bit more room in the freezer. And then the last thing we are going to do with it is we are going to try a new canning recipe, corn salsa. I think it would be so delicious on like burrito bowls and tacos and things like that. I have never made it before, but I would like to make a batch or two of that. So we are also going to be canning that. Possibly not today, but you'll see it in this video. We don't know how much we're gonna get done today. So, cause we've had a very busy day already. If you watch my weekend vlog, you know we've had a busy day in the garden and with the chickens and everything, so. That's what happens sometimes on a little suburban homestead. And you know, just because I like to preserve a lot of our food and can it and freeze it and things like that, I don't necessarily grow all of it and you don't have to either. You could live in an apartment and still preserve food. You don't have to grow it. That's what farmer's markets and local farms are for. Even if you live in the city, I'm guessing not far out of the city, there's farmer's markets or farms that you can go to. We bought, we do not grow corn. It is not worth it for us to grow corn. We don't have the space and it's just, we tried it one year and it was a disaster. So I just support my local farmer. There is a farm in the next, there's actually a farm right down the street. Their prices were higher and it would have cost me $40 more. And I know 40 doesn't sound like a lot, but it is in the grand scheme of things. 
So we went one more town over to another farm. Um, so just for reference, so you know, like to compare where you live, we pay $30, yes, that's how much we pay, $30 for 50 ears of corn. The farm that was right down the street from us was $40 for 50 ears of corn. So we ended up saving, you know, $10 a bushel, which 40 bucks is 40 bucks in my world, you know? Um, so when you do buy it in bulk, you do get it cheaper. Like if I went to buy a dozen ears of corn, a dozen ears of corn is $10.25. So buying in bulk, you definitely get a better price. Um, and that is why I make a day and do all this just to get that great price and just get it all done. So the first thing we're going to do is we are just, we, we have almost all the corn shucked. Um, you saw us doing that. And then we are going to start on blanching it. So I'm going to show you how my setup and we're going to get going. So I have my two big canning pots boiling with just plain water. Then I have the first batch of corn that's going to go in. And then I cleared off my counters and I have just two old bath towels on the counter to put the corn on. But before it goes on there, it is going to go in the sink. This sink is going to be filled with ice water. I am waiting for Andrew to come home with the ice. I don't want to use all the ice from my freezer because, well, we need ice. So he went down to the Dollar Tree to pick up like six pounds of ice. So we have a nice ice bath for the corn. Let's get started. Okay, I have 18 pieces in that pot. And I just have a few in this pot because I boiled all the water away and so we are going to blanch these for three minutes and then we're going to plunge them in the sink ready okay we're going to take it out and plunge it in our ice water and that is going to stop the cooking process because we don't want the corn cooked we just want it blanched we want it not raw not cooked so we are just going to take all those out and then we're gonna get the next batch started. Okay, so then we're just gonna take them out of the ice bath. We've stopped the cooking, lay them on our towel and keep going. Once I get enough, we will start taking this corn off of the cob. I don't have any special tools or anything to do that. We just use a knife. Now I have seen people take a bunt pan and stick the corn in the center of the bunt pan and then do it and all the corn falls right into the bunt pan. But we tried that once and it didn't work too well for us. So we just put it on a cutting board and cut away. Okay, there it is. 200, actually probably about 190 years of corn. I kept six out for dinner and there were four that we kept out that weren't the prettiest. Um, that we gave to the chickens. So it is all blanched. The next step is to take it off the cob and start putting it in food saver bags to freeze it. That is how I like to freeze my corn and taking the prettiest ones and leaving them whole on the cob and freezing them that way. Once we get it all off the cob, the ones we're taking off the cob, I'm going to um, take out, I believe it is 18 cups. I'm gonna make two batches of traditional corn relish out of the ball book. You're number one. I've already done four. You're slacker. Well, I had to get changed, sorry. I was quite dirty from the garden. Yeah, I know, you should see my knees. <laughs> so here we go. I mean, there are, like I said, fancy tools to do this, but I don't, as he spills it on the floor. It's just really, really quick and easy with a knife. And I don't know, maybe someday I'll invest in one. But for now, this is the way that we do it. So we've got all that set aside on the towel. And that we are going to do, we're going to freeze that whole. I'm going to do four ears, six packages of four ears. That's kind of like, like a, a package a month, I guess. And then the rest of it, nine cups of it is going to be for relish, corn relish. And then 
The rest of it we're just gonna freeze. I forget what we did last year. Two cup portions did we do? Uh, that sounds right. Yeah, I think that's what we did. So we're gonna get cut. Okay, so how we are preserving most of this is cut off the cob. And we're putting three cups into a food saver bag using our food saver machine and packaging it up. It's a vacuum sealer and we'll go right in the freezer. So we figure three cups is a good amount to do. So that is what we are doing. We still have lots and lots and lots to do. And there is corn and corn juice everywhere. That was a lot of corn. <laughs> it is now the next day. We got all the corn in the freezer. I meant to take a picture of all of it and show it to you, but I was taking it down in batches. But just so you know, 200 ears of corn, actually about 190 ears of corn because we ate um, a half a dozen for dinner and four of them I gave to the chickens. So that was 10 years right there. So 190 years of corn got us 127 cups of kernels. I did 36 freezer bags of three cups. So I figured three cups was probably a good amount. I think that's what we did last year and it was perfect. So three cups into 36 freezer bags. I did six freezer bags with four full ears in it so we could have corn on the cob in the winter. Um, I did keep out nine cups for relish. So that all equals minus the ones on the cob, 127 cups of sweet corn. It's a lot of corn. Yeah, but that's good. We will have it all winter. Um, Next on the list is taking that nine cups or eight cups that I kept out and I'm going to make home style, no I'm not, yes, home style corn relish. It is out of the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. We're gonna give that a try. I hear that it's really good on tacos and quesadillas and things like that. I have the corn, I wanna experiment with new recipes, I might as well give it a try. So that is what we are going to make right now. Okay, I have the jars heating in the canner. We'll talk about the canner in a little bit, but right now we need to get our brine going. So I am gonna take four cups of vinegar. It is just white distilled vinegar, 5% acidity, that is very important. We're gonna get this on medium high. And we have one and a quarter cups of sugar and two tablespoons of salt. Sounds like a lot, but there's gonna be a lot here, so it's really not. We are just gonna stir this. We are gonna bring this to a boil over medium high heat and just stir it until the sugar and salt dissolve. So while we are waiting for our brine to come to a boil and our jars to heat up, we're gonna chop up four cups of mixed red and green bell peppers. Now, I only have one little red bell pepper, but with peppers in a canning recipe, you can switch up the kinds of peppers you use. You just cannot switch up the amount. We must use four cups, but I am using red bell pepper, green bell pepper, and I'm also using some cubanelle peppers because it's what I have. So you can mix up the type, you just cannot stray from the amount. So we have to have four cups of chopped peppers. So I'm gonna get these chopped up, then we'll get started on the onion. Okay, we have our four cups of peppers, and now we need one cup of onion, finely diced onion. So we are gonna work on that. And once we get that done, I'm hoping that the brine is boiling and we can get started cooking down our mixture. Okay, we've got our onion done. And now last but not least, we need a one and three quarter cup of chopped celery. So we're just gonna chop that the same way we've chopped everything else in our handy dandy little chopper here. And 
and I'm gonna go measure this out. Okay, our brine is up to a boil, so we're gonna start adding in all our veggies. I'm gonna start with the corn, and I'm gonna add them slowly because we wanna keep that boil going. And my corn is cold because it came out of the refrigerator. Okay, I just wanna let that get back up to a boil before we add any more, because the directions do say to maintain the boil. Okay, it's beginning to boil again, so we're gonna start adding the rest of the veggies, just a little bit at a time, so we can maintain that boil. I just added in the celery. And it looks like it's still going, so now we're gonna add in some of the peppers and the onions. I'll do about half. Let me give that a couple minutes just to make sure that we're back up boiling. Okay, I'm gonna add the rest of the veggies. And then we're gonna add all the spices. So I have two tablespoons of dry mustard powder, two teaspoons of turmeric, and two teaspoons of celery seed. And we're just gonna mix this really, really well. We're gonna let it come back up to a boil and we're gonna let it cook. I believe it's five minutes, I'll double check. Yes, five minutes. Now, there is an optional part to this. At this point in the recipe, you can make a paste of clear gel and water and add it to your relish. I'm choosing not to do that. I don't want it super, super thick. If I decide it's too thin when we open the jars, I will just thicken it then, but I'm not a big fan of the clear gel. Plus, I don't have any anyway. So I'm just going to, it is an optional step. So I am just gonna leave that out for now and then decide when we open them if we want it to be thicker or not. And if we do, what I'll do is just heat up the relish slightly, add in my thickener, which will more than likely be like an arrowroot powder, and then let it chill again overnight. But I really don't think I want it I mean, I think that's gonna be pretty thick for what we're using it for. I mean, I plan to use it on tacos and possibly to dip some um, nacho chips in as more of a salsa. That's my plan. We'll see what happens. I've never made this before. This is new to me. I just wanted to give something different a try. I like trying different recipes each year. So we're gonna let that come back to a boil. It's just starting and go for five minutes. Okay, while that is boiling, I just want to real quickly um, tell you why I'm not using my water bath canner on the stove. I'm not using my water bath canner on the stove because it is 98 degrees here today. And that really heats up the kitchen. So I am using my Presto Precise Digital Pressure Cap excuse me, pressure canner. But with this, you can also water bath can. You cannot water bath can quarts. You can only water bath half pints and pints because you need to have enough water over it. But that's fine because these go in pints anyway. So this way I'm not gonna heat up the house with having the stove on and all that boiling water and all that steam. I'm just gonna do it right in here and that will be perfect. So that is what I am waiting on. The jars are ready. They're through the heating cycle. 
I'm just waiting for the relish mixture to boil for five minutes. We'll get those jars filled, get them in, and we're gonna be done with this project. Okay, you've seen me fill jars a hundred times, but I'll just do one for you. So I'm gonna take my hot jar and I'm gonna put in an eighth of a teaspoon of pickle crisp. That just helps the veggies stay crisp through the canning process. And then we are going to fill our jars to a half inch head space with our hot relish. This smells really good. Trying to get a good amount of corn and also a good amount of liquid in there. Once again, can't find my debubbler. So we're just gonna use a plastic knife. And then we'll adjust our head space to a half an inch. Because right now that's at an inch. So when you pressure can plain corn, or when you can plain sweet corn, it has to be pressure canned because corn is a very low acid food. And the only way to make it safe is to pressure can it but when you're doing a recipe like this, you can water bath can it because of the four cups of vinegar. That brings the acidity up enough to make it safe for water bath canning. So there it is, our beautiful corn relish, first one going in. And I am just gonna continue with the rest of my jars. Um, the book says that this makes approximately six pints. So, We'll see what we get out of it. Okay, six pints in the canner. We're just going to advance it. It'll heat up. It'll process for 15 minutes. It'll switch to cool down mode and we are done. Okay, here are these beauties out of the canner. All jars sealed. As always, I am using my four jars lids best canning lids ever made right here in the US of A. There's a link down in the description box below along with a discount code. You can save 10% if you are a canner and you're looking for some good lids. So there they are. Okay, next up we're gonna make some corn cob jelly. You know I do not like to waste. Most of these corn cobs will go in the freezer and then we'll give them to the chickens over the winter. Um, I don't know how true it is, but you know, some sources say giving them corn in the summer speeds up their metabolism too much and makes them too hot. So it's a better winter treat. I don't know, either way, you can find uh, information both ways, but we give it to them in the winter. So I don't wanna put it all in the freezer. So I'm gonna give some to my buddy Jason for his chickens and we are going to use some to make some corn cob jelly. From what I hear, whoops, sorry, corn cob jelly, Tastes a lot like honey and it's great on cornbread. So we figure why not give it a try? So I have 12 ears of corn that have been stripped of the kernels. And then I'm just gonna add two quarts of water or enough to cover. So I think I'll put another little bit in there. Just maybe another half a quart. And we're gonna bring this to a boil and we are going to let it boil lightly. We don't want a hard boil for 40 minutes. What we're just trying to do is we're just trying to juice these cobs. We're trying to get all the juice out of the cob and then we're gonna strain it off, but that'll be our next step for now. Let's get these started boiling and let them simmer for 40 minutes. Okay, our corn cobs have come to a boil. I am just going to turn it down and have it boil gently for 40 minutes to extract all that good juice. Okay, it's been 40 minutes. I am just gonna take these cobs out of the water and just put them in a colander. And then we're gonna take this juice and we are going to put it in a bowl, but we're gonna strain it through a double layer of cheesecloth and a colander. That way all these little bits 
will not be in our jelly. They'll stay out. These will get fed to the chickens at some point. Okay, let's strain this off. There we go. Now we are just gonna let this drip through. We're not gonna squeeze it. We're not going to do any of that. We're just gonna let that drip through. And there we have our corn juice. Smells like corn. So on to the next step, which will be making the jelly. We're going to need three cups of the corn cob juice in a large saucepan. We'll get going on that. Okay, I have my corn juice, for lack of a better word, in my pot. I have three cups in there. I did have more than three cups, but the recipe calls for three cups. Then we need to add in our pectin. I am using something different than my Pomona's pectin. I contacted Pomona's and they do not have a safe recipe, um, a safe tested recipe for corn cob jelly with their pectin. The recipe from the National Center for Home Food Preservation uses the Sure Gel in their recipe. So that is what I'm using. I'm using one pouch of the Sure Gel. It is one and three quarter ounces. And I am adding that right in. And we're gonna mix that up. And we are gonna let that dissolve and we are gonna have this come to a boil. Okay, our corn juice is up to a rolling boil. Now we're gonna add in the sugar. And I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot of sugar. It is three cups of sugar. So this is definitely a very sugary recipe, but it's a treat, I guess. I don't know, never had it, don't know. We will see. I just wanted to try it. You gotta try everything once. And it's not like we're eating the whole jar at one time. We're eating a teaspoon or two. Okay, we are just going to keep stirring, bring it back to a boil. We're gonna let it boil for five minutes, stirring constantly. Okay, this is just about done. We are gonna take it off the heat and start getting it in our jars. Same method we use for everything else. Hot jar out of the canner, hot liquid in. We're gonna do a quarter inch head space like most jams and jellies are. This is gonna be very sticky, so we make sure we wipe that rim really, really well. Get our four jars lid. It's hot. Get her right back in the canner. That's what it looks like. It's a beautiful pale yellow color. And we're just gonna get, it's supposed to make four half pints. So that's what I have ready. Okay, here are four half pints and one quarter pint of corn cob jelly out of the canner. It's a really pretty color. It almost looks like um, apple scrap jelly that I made last year. And there was a little bit left, so we were able to taste it. And yes, it does taste like honey, and I think it'll be really good on cornbread. So that was a pretty cool experiment, and we like it. So my friends, there you have it. 200 ears of corn processed. 36 bags of corn kernels in the freezer, six bags of corn on the cobs in the freezer, 
six, do we get six pints of corn relish ready to be eaten when we have tacos and five jars of corn cob jelly and a whole bunch of corn cobs in the fridge and freezer to feed the chickens. So pretty cool, pretty successful. I don't really want to look at corn for another week or so, but it was a lot of fun doing it. And I know that we will all appreciate the efforts come this winter when we are having some fresh Jersey corn. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for spending some time with me in the kitchen and I will see you all in my next video. Have a great one.